Hi there, and welcome to Totally Incorrect. This is the podcast that looks at history, culture, politics, and religion. And today, it's all about statues. It's not politically correct. It's totally incorrect. You're listening to the Totally Incorrect Podcast with David Holliday. Why have statues suddenly become so important and such a big part of the culture wars that are going on at the moment, both in the United States and in other countries? Um, I've read that the most common statue or the person that has the most statues of them in existence is the Virgin Mary, which I think is kind of ironic because I don't believe anyone has the faintest idea what she looked like. She certainly wasn't the white woman that's shown in the statues and the artwork that you see of her all all over the world, but somehow that's gotten to be an accepted view, and good old Mary seems to have gotten away from this controversy to a very large extent. Um, In the UK where I grew up, Just down the road from the first house that I owned was a statue of Queen Victoria, the queen who reigned over a large empire that was exploiting lots of countries and lots of people. And when I was a kid, um, other young people, to pass the time, would often paint the statue blue. Um, It was quite common, probably a couple of times a year, the old queen will be painted blue. Um, Not a big deal. The local council cleaned it up. We got on with our lives. Not a problem. But nowadays, statues have um, really become in the news with a move to take down a lot of statues of people who had rather dubious pasts. And a good example of that is Edward Colston in Bristol in the UK. Um, Until a couple of weeks ago, I don't think many people... Even people who grew up in Bristol had the faintest idea who Edward Colston was and what he did. His statue was actually erected on the waterfront in Bristol in 1895. And um, good old Ed died in 1721. So sometime after he died, a statue in his memory was made. And just a few weeks ago, it was dumped in the river in the harbour front. Why was that? Um, And the reason was that Edward Colston wasn't a slave owner. He was the owner of a shipping company. And his shipping company was pretty successful. And he made a lot of money. A lot of it he spent on charities in Bristol. A lot of the modern city of Bristol was built on money provided by Colston. Um, But he made his money by shipping cargo from Africa to the American colonies. And the cargo in question wasn't palm oil or fruit or oil or any of the other commodities that could be extracted from the African continent. The cargo was people. The cargo was slaves. And apparently Colston was responsible for shipping something like 65,000 slaves to the New World. It would have been closer to 100,000, other than a lot of them died on the way and were just thrown overboard. The conditions were not too good. So Edward Colston, no one had heard of him. A lot of people have heard of him now on account of his statue ending up in the water. Um, Here in the US, a lot of controversy about Confederate statues glorifying the generals and the people who rebelled against the United States and set up the Confederacy. To be fair, there has been a move to remove a lot of those over the last few years, but that certainly seems to be moving forward more now, particularly with the Black Lives Matter movement and people now being way more offended of those statues than perhaps they were were in the past. Um, Over in the UK, colonialists, such as um, Cecil Rhodes, whose statue sits on a university um, college, 
Um, Rhodes was famous for being a prime minister of Cape Province in South Africa. Um, he actually had a country, Rhodesia, named after him. And he was the managing director of De Beers, the company that back in his day ran the diamond trade and pretty much still does today. Um, Rhodes was an out-and-out colonialist, um, definitely was a racist, definitely was a believer in keeping the black occupants of the countries that he worked in under control and working for him. So there's a lot of um, pressure at the moment to take down statues of Rhodes from the college where, where, he, where he's um, still on display to this day. I think he'll be gone within the next few weeks, which is, which is good. But, but also other famous colonialists, one of them being Winston Churchill, are under pressure as well. Um, Churchill's obviously very well known for being the leader of the UK and by extension the British Empire during the Second World War, but he has a long history of being involved in colonial issues, of racism, and where does Churchill sit in, in, in all of this? And moving over the Atlantic to the United States, some of the founders of the country, including George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, were both slaveholders and both are represented with statues and, in fact, very large monuments in Washington, D.C. What should happen with those? Are these the wonderful founding fathers of the country that they're portrayed to be? Are they just racist slave owners? who had their own interests at heart. Where do you stand on that? Is it good to keep these statues as a reminder of those evil times? And certainly the supporters of them who will claim, hey, they're part of our heritage. They teach people what happened back then and you can't judge people by the standards of today. You can only judge people by the standards of the times they lived in. But at the same time, um, looking back to Bristol, Edward Colston, no one, and I grew up in the UK, I left there when I was about 35, so I was there for a big part of my life, and I'd never heard of Edward Colston and the evil part he played in the African slave trade. And I, I would bet that a lot of people, and I don't know how many thousands of people every year or every week or every month or every day, walk past the statue of Edward Colston in Bristol, I wonder how many people are even aware of who he was and who he did. Today, everyone in the UK has heard his name, as well as in other parts of the world, because we all saw on the news and we can see on YouTube his statue being taken down and dumped in the harbour. Um, to me, that keeps the history alive more than a statue static statue standing in the town somewhere. People can always see those videos. People can always ask the question, why? Why was this person considered worthy of having a statue standing here? The history, history is live. And history, I personally think, shouldn't be consigned to a statue that nobody ever looks at. History should be discussed. It should be talked about. It should give us lessons for today and lessons for the future. So I think for the protesters in Bristol that threw Edward Colston's statue in the harbour, yes, success. We've really made people aware of what he did and how he did it, how they crammed so many people that to him were assets, weren't people, onto their ships so that he could sell them as, as a profit, how he was a pretty evil man. And in Bristol, people are having to come to terms with the fact that a lot of the success and the wealth of the town that they were brought up in and live in was based on the slave trade. Similarly, in the United States, particularly in the southern states, but in the northern ones as well to a large extent, the success of the country in its early years was very much built on the backs of slaves who were brought from Africa, from people such as Edward Colston and, and many, many other people like him. That's what made the country successful. 
Should we just remember that in a statue that people walk past every now and again and don't pay any attention to? Or is it better for it to be in a live discussion, maybe some cool videos of people taking those statues down and no longer celebrating those people? I would vote that since history is living, removing those statues is is the way to go. I'm, I'm sure that there's people that have other opinions, so I'd be very interested to hear. If you see this on social media, please make a comment as to your views. Keep the statues or make history live. What's your point of view? I'd love to know. Thank you.